hello and welcome to the East Wing second floor uh, where we we have sun and we have greenery um, so I thought I'd start the little tour in the corridor um, but I'm just gonna have a little walk down now I'm uh, just walking towards my new studio um, which is E2P um, so I'm now sharing with print designer Fanny Shorter, leather worker Johnetta Taylor, and knitter Bryony e. Phipps Wardle. Um, so now with hats as well, we've got you covered here in E2P. I'm just going to have a quick scoop pass just to see who else. If any of the neighbours are here. Uh, so this is Maria's studio, but she's down in the Ed space working on her big make at the moment. So she's got more space down there. God, look at this light up here. I'm not used to this from the West, West Wing. And, um, oh yeah, here's Vanessa. We'll just have a little, little sneak peek at her. Anyway, we'll head back into my studio. I'm sorry if this is a bit wobbly, but um, I'll try try not to make you too seasick. So, yeah, here we are, E2P, and such a beautiful light up here. Um, I was I was in Studio W7. Oh, actually, before we do that, I was just going to show you in the window. Yeah, so I was in Studio W7 for 15 years, and I loved it there, but I do love my new studio too. Um, so yeah, this week I've, um, I've been really busy doing this hat, well, promoting this hat for the Royal Ascot charity auction. Um, and yeah, Royal Ascot was this week, and the auction is just on for a few more hours. So anyone interested can still place a bid. Um, and it was a collaboration between Royal Ascot or Ascot Racecourse and the newly reinstated British Hat Guild that I've been involved in. Um, so um, <laughs> I've just seen a question from Edwina. I'm going to, um, yeah, various reasons why I moved studios. Um, partly a change of personal circumstances, partly the way my practice had evolved. Um, it kind of became less, less of a need for such a big space. And then this particular space was available, so I thought I should just go for it. Um, so, it, yeah. Um, oh, what I'm just going to do is put it here. So I can say a quick hello in person. Hi. <laughs> um, just so that you can put a, a face to the voice. Um, <laughs> and yeah, just go back to showing you how much height we've got up here. Um, it's, I love this shot of all my patterns. Um, and so, yeah, just going back to this one. So, um, I'm going to stop looking at the comments actually, because it's distracting me too much. And I'm quite good at um, multitasking when it comes to dealing with loads of seasons in one time, <laughs> but I can't multitask like this. Anyway, um, <laughs> so I'm more known for my casual hats, as probably people know. Having said that, I have two of my couture hats here um, on display as well, just to show a contrast, really. Um, but these have become a much smaller part of my business now. It's much more about, this, um, say, the men's flat caps here. Um, and really, I'm acutely aware at the moment in this current crisis how, how fortunate I am in that respect. Um, thinking about all the, my fellow milliners in the British Hat Guild, how, how incredibly positive they've been um, 
throughout this and really they've seen their livelihoods disappear this year um, but anyway they'll be back next year stronger I'm sure um, so yeah to go back to the Royal Ascot one you can see the the colours on the back of it now um, this was a technique that I started um, sort of a couple of years ago uh, for London Craft Week um, and this is one I made last year. It's the same shape, it's the Petra design. Um, and they're both in this beautiful, vintage, very fine parasizal straw. Um, and it's a version of this. Uh, this is more from the standard women's range. It's the same style, but in a black linen. Um, they're a bit more practical, that one. Um, I've always had this theme, I think, running through my work of, um, or a tension between sort of everyday hats and couture hats. And this sort of, this is how it's manifested itself um, at the moment, really. So it's quite, it's not a commercial part of what I do, really. Um, I have another one here. So this is the same shape as the one I'm wearing. Um, I'm wearing a practical one, but this is in, again, a vintage straw. And this is, although this has been machine stitched, it, I will now finish this by hand. Um, so it has a different quality. Um, this is how they started life, uh, really fine. And it's, it's called a capoline, and that's how we buy buy it as um, milliners. So usually you see things like this blocked into shapes like this and this one. Um, so it's just a different way of working with that to create um, these, these pieces. Um, I'll just go on to the men's flat cap. So this is um, one of my most popular styles, the Clive and it now, now has its own face mask. Um, that's a whole other story. Um, I'll probably have to come back to that, I think. I uh, found that quite distracting recently, making lots of masks. Um, so I've got a bit of work in progress here as well. Gosh, this, the sun has really just come shining through now. Um, and yes, yeah, so I've just had all online orders for the Clive in both colours, in the maize and the blue, in a size 60. Um, this is one of the few where I've graded the pattern to for all sizes, really, right through from 56 up to 63, I think, or even 64. Um, I wouldn't do that with most of the styles um, but this is really um, the most popular one um, and just moving on a bit more work in progress um, so this I have my barley visor here and this comes in lots of different colors and patterns um, and it's very practical. I'm nothing if not practical. Um, and I'm just about to make a smaller version for, for smaller faces. Um, and this, these are actually, it's a similar process really to, in, in the beginning part is this similar where you have to iron out and flatten the hood. So this is a Panama capoline. Um, so that's what I use for those. Um, just looking at my cutting table. Uh, <laughs> I used to, when I had more space, I had a separate cutting table, but I realized it's not really necessary. I have all these drawers um, full of fabric. Some of them contain hats, um, but I knew it could work having a cutting table just on top of them, really. Um, so I'm going to walk around. Um, and just head down here. So this 
piece of kit here it's very important um, this is the heat press so where I had the pattern pieces cut out ready um, or not cut out that's going to have interfacing fused onto it in the in the heat press here and then we'll um, replace the pattern pieces and cut out um, and yeah so just going down so I've got some of my wooden blocks down here underneath the heat press um, oh Edwina's asking if we can see a finished visor yeah I'll show you that in a second um, yeah I when I made the move I decided I would probably want to do more of my couture work at home and concentrate on the on the pattern cutting and the men's and women's ranges soft soft hats here at cockpit um, so I've taken most of the the blocks home I've just left the heavier brim blocks here um, so I'll just quickly show you uh, so these are all finished visors here they're flat pack so they're very practical um, it's probably easier to have a look on my website I've got them all on there um, but hopefully that showed it um, so this time of year the heat press gets a lot of use um, so of course I've got my customers orders that I'm making um, that I get from shows or online well this year oh, online only um, and but in addition to that I'm also making uh, you're welcome Edwina <laughs> I'm I'm also making the autumn winter orders for my stockists and these are the orders that I just took in Paris at um, Paris Fashion Week. So that was end of February, beginning of March. And that was an interesting season. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think any of us quite realised how serious it was going to get, although it was very quiet at the time. Um, but yeah, this is... A new new style I made for this coming autumn and it was it's evolved from one of my cloche hats um, it's got the similar self trim but it's got more of a brim this this one um, so that did very well um, thanks Hector <laughs> um, that did very well in Paris um, and so I've got lots of those cut out these are the brim pieces and the trim pieces so you can see here um, where it's got the cotton interfacing that's been uh, fused on and that's the the fabric behind it um, oh now is a good time to mention my Petra Bishai ring I thought this is a perfect opportunity to plug someone else's work um, so Petra is also um, a designer maker at Cockpit um, and yes I've got the the crown pieces over here um, so that's these are going to be hats for some of my stockists so there's mostly Japan, South Korea. Um, I'm just showing you the shelving now. And, and across Europe. Um, so these are books from exhibitions I've visited. Um, and it's always quite inspiring. And yeah, coming back to the, the masks. Um, Anyone that knows me knows how prolific I am. <laughs> and um, I've kind of gone for it with the masks. Um, I started out with quite a classic, symmetrical pleated style. That's one in cotton shirting. But then I had to do it asymmetric. 
Uh, so this is a new one that I haven't added to the shop yet. Um, and that's in... Oh, thanks, Anne. I'm so pleased that your mask fitted you as well. <laughs> um, this is in a cotton and bamboo. It's really soft. And yeah, a couple of um, matching ones. Um, not sure if that's too much, maybe. Not sure. Um, I have some lovely cotton lawn, some of it Liberty print that I've um, I've just got quite small amounts, so it's all like the hats, really. They're limited edition um, because, you know, you don't want to see someone else wearing the same mask. How embarrassing that would be. Um, so going on oh, back to autumn, winter. Um, I have so here. Oh, yes shows um, Hat Magazine with my one of my winter visors on the cover, which is very nice. Thank you to them. Um, and that's the same piece in camel. And I've got lots of these to make. Um, these are for one of my lovely stockists in South Korea. It's a great um, fashion accessories store called So Salt. Um, and they are I'm going to start working on those very soon. Um, and this is my hat stretcher or hot block. Very, very useful for setting each hat as um, soon as they're finished. And um, these drawers here, uh, it's all work in progress here. So I've got lots of the autumn winter pieces cut out, ready to stitch. Um, on my trusty sewing machine that gets a lot of action. Um, if anyone is interested in sneak peek of autumn winter 20, um, I have a few pieces here. Uh, two new beret shapes. bit of um, crazy two-tone check um, and this is quite a long-standing design <clears throat> I've done for a while but in new fabric so it brings it of course I'm in the new studio David <laughs> I've spent the whole of lockdown moving in really <laughs> um, yeah so this is a new fabric for the Bergman um, and I think it's going to be quite successful. I hope so. Um, I think... Oh, just one more thing that I didn't mention over here. I've got some... I haven't... I've really got to start on some new men's designs quite soon. So my... I've got some looming deadlines of the... Um, some of the women's autumn winter designs. Um, so as soon as I've got those out, I'll, I'll get working on some new men's designs. Um, and so just heading back to the machine now, I'm going to sit down. And um, I love how all these, these are the pieces that I've got ready to stitch together for the winter visor in the wool felt. And these, um, I, I was able to prepare these at home, actually. Um, these all started out as a wool felt capoline, so very similar shape to the straw that I showed you earlier on. Um, so, yeah, these are all ready to stitch now. And I'd like to say that I'm going to get started on these as soon as I finish talking. Um, realistically, I think I'm probably more likely to see what's coming up next in our live schedule. <laughs> I've really enjoyed seeing everyone else's. Um, thank you, Petra. My ring looks gorgeous too. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I think that's probably, I'm sure you've had enough now anyway. Um, there's loads more things 
to go and see. Um, but I do hope that not too far in the future um, you'll be able to visit in real life. But until then, thank you very much for visiting and goodbye.